Vedic meditation is an ancient technique that's been handed down through an unbroken tradition of masters from India to the modern day. The technique involves sitting innocently, effortlessly, with eyes closed, relaxedly, and making use of a specific kind of mantra. We refer to these mantras as a term of art as bija. Bija, B-I-J-A, is the ancient Sanskrit word, Sanskrit is the language of ancient India, for seed, a seed mantra. This distinguishes this type of mantra from other types of mantras. For example, a mantra that you might learn to chant in a yoga studio, or a mantra which is some kind of an affirmation or a, a, a sort of um, reminder of a particular goal or idea. These mantras that we use in Vedic meditation have no intended meaning. They work on the level of sound. The sound and vibrational quality of the mantra is very important. And there are different mantras that work best for different people for the purpose of taking the mind from thinking into being. Being is the name given to that least excited state of consciousness. That consciousness state that underlies the entire thinking process. The state of being is not created by meditating. Meditation takes the mind to a pre-existing layer. That layer of being, that deep inner silent place, is the source of thought. Cognitive scientists tell us that in a given day we might produce anywhere from 60,000 to 100,000 thought forms. These are all like ideas and memories and all sorts of cognitive processes. Thought has energy in it. We can even measure the energy in a thought if we look at the effect it has on our brain and the electrical activity of our brain using an electroencephalograph. So thought has energy. All processes require energy and thought is a process. But thought is not just an explosion, explosion of random energy. Thought is about something very specific. So that discriminating value in thought shows to us the intelligence inherent in every thought process. With 60,000 to 100,000 streams of energy and intelligence rising in the mind every day, the source of all of that, the source of thought, deep within, must be an infinite reservoir of creativity and intelligence. During Vedic meditation, we make use of the mantra given by our qualified teacher, someone who's been trained in this specific tradition, and thinking the mantra very effortlessly, we discover that the mantra with each repetition becomes a more and more charming pulsation of thought. The charm of the thought, the actual happiness that's yield by, yielded by thinking the word, causes the mind to be drawn in the direction that the mantra is taking, which is subtler, subtler, quieter, softer, fainter. As the mind drifts inward effortlessly, because our mind's tendency is always to follow greater charm without using any effort. Our mind, for example, if you're listening to music in this room and a more pleasant melody comes from another room, naturally we'll move toward the more pleasant melody without our using any effort for it to do so. Likewise, when the mind is settling down to subtler and subtler states of the mantra, as the mantra becomes so faint that it is almost imperceptible it's also rivetingly charming. Our mind is fascinated by this sound, and then the sound vanishes, and the mind is left for a moment in a state where there is no mantra and no thought replacing it, and yet you're conscious. That conscious, de-excited state, that least excited state, is a state of pure awareness, being, that state is intrinsically bliss. Here we have to make sure that we understand that bliss, in this way of using the word, does not mean ecstatic happiness. It is supreme inner contentedness. And that supreme inner contentedness is what causes the mind 
to fall mute, the mind to go into silence. We know there's a relationship between silence and bliss, but it is bliss that causes silence. Silence is a product of the mind experiencing supreme inner contentedness. So during the practice of Vedic meditation, we are learning to transcend thought. To transcend means to step beyond. Transcending thought is the entire purpose of the practice of Vedic meditation. And the technique is absolutely effortless to practice. Typically, once learned, one would do it as a strategy each morning and each evening. Sometime in the morning before the commencement of your day's activity, and sometime late afternoon or early evening after the day's activity has ended, but making the transition into the evening activity, one would want to sit and meditate for 20 minutes. So 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, this essentially is what the practice entails. The benefits of it are vast and are amazing. For the mind to experience that being at home with itself, coming into that least excited state, that simplest form of awareness is intrinsically fulfilling to what the mind always has been seeking, which is a sustained, unchanging layer of happiness inside you. Once you have self-referral happiness, baseline happiness, then every time you go into activity, instead of seeking solely in the outside world for where is the happiness, where is the happiness, the mind looking around in the outside world for its fulfillment and satisfaction, instead of that, the mind has this baseline happiness, which through thought and actions, through achievements, you're taking that fulfillment on an excursion into daily life. And there's a, a vast array of physiological benefits. Namely, when the mind settles down into that least excited state, the body has an extraordinarily deep level of rest. This deep and profound restfulness allows the body to release and relieve the accumulation of stress, which may have accumulated for years. And so from these ideas, we have the totality of the picture of Vedic meditation and what it does, what it's about.